Hi, welcome back. This is lesson number four in the Early World Civilizations Read Aloud series. The lesson is The Hanging Gardens of Babylon. You may remember that Babylon stood on the banks of the Euphrates River and was the home of King Hammurabi, who wrote the laws called the Code of Hammurabi. Well, many years after Hammurabi ruled Babylon, there was another king in Babylon with another long name. This king's name was Nebuchadnezzar. That could be a hard name to say, but everyone in Babylon learned it. Here we find a whole group of travelers that make up a caravan headed for Babylon. Let's pretend that you and I are traveling to Babylon with this caravan. We have been traveling for weeks to get there so that we can sell fine, co fine cotton cloth, which for now is all rolled up on the backs of our donkeys. Most of us are hoping to sell things in Babylon and then buy new things to trade back home. There are guides and guards to lead us through the desert and to protect us from bandits on the way. Some of the travelers actually come from Babylon, including a merchant named Eli, with whom we have become friends. Eli has been away from home for months, and he is glad to be getting home to Babylon. As we approach the high walls of the city, you tell him, I have seen lots of cities with walls, but I have never seen a wall as big as this one. Yes, Eli tells us proudly, it is about 16,000 cubits long so that it can go all around Babylon. The wall is so strong and wide that soldiers have room to turn their chariots and horses around on the top. But wait a few minutes and you will see one of the loveliest sights along that wall. A few minutes later, up ahead, we glimpse a tall, wide gate in the wall. Blue glazed bricks over the gate, glittering in the bright sunlight. That is the famous Ishtar Gate, Eli tells us. Our king had it built, then named it for one of the Babylon's goddesses. Half an hour later, soldiers at the Ishtar Gate allow our group to enter, and we find ourselves walking on streets made of stone. This feels strange after the weeks we have spent walking on the shifting sands of the desert. Large statues stand every so often along the sides of the street. Look, the statues are made of gold. As we continue on our way, we pass marvelous palaces and busy shops filled with things to buy. Tomorrow, we will take our cloth to one of the shop owners who has promised to buy it. Our friend Eli has invited us to dinner at his home tonight. You are lucky, he says. The windows of the inn where you will be staying look out upon the most amazing sight in all of Babylon. Do you mean the famous gardens, I ask? Yes, Eli replies. Then looking around carefully to make sure that no one else can hear, he says quietly, King Nebuchadnezzar can be very cruel if he does not like you, but he also has a good side for those he likes or loves. And the person he loves most of all is his queen. The queen came from a land of hills and mountains with green meadows, rich with tall trees and colorful flowers. Some say that after she moved here, the queen missed her home, so our king decided to build her a mountain covered with green plants, the famous hanging gardens, so the queen would not be so homesick. But now I must leave you, for this is my street. Remember, you are dining with us this evening. Come hungry, for there will be plenty to eat. And smiling again, Eli leaves us to continue toward our inn. We have gone only one block more 
when you glance over the rooftops ahead and stop in your tracks. Look, you exclaim, your eyes opening wide in wonder. When I look up, I have the same reaction. There, rising above the roofs of the city, we see the famous man-made hill. Many stories high, it is a series of level of platforms built one on top of another and connected by ramps and stairways. Narrowing in size, the higher you look, the platforms must are almost completely covered with trees, vines, and blooming flowers. The flowers are in such abundance that they hang over the sides and give the, the place its name. We stand amazed at this sight. How on earth can King Nebuchadnezzar grow all these plants in the middle of hot, dry Babylon? That night when we are at dinner, Eli explains, the level parts of the garden are made of mud bricks covered in lead so that the water does not leak through. Workers had to carry up the tons of dirt to cover those parts and then they set all the plants in place. The water for the plants is shifted and lifted in buckets attached to a long chain. This chain runs around the edges of two great wheels, one at the bottom of the building and one at the top. Workers turn these wheels with cranks and the buckets dip into the pond of water at the bottom that is filled from the river nearby. As the wheels keep turning, the buckets become full and are lifted up to the top of the chain where they are emptied with their, their contents are emptied into another pond. From this pond, channels direct the water down to the different garden levels and out among the plants. I tell Eli and his family, I am amazed at how clever all of this is and how rich King Nebuchadnezzar must be. But you ask, and does his queen like it? Eli just smiles at us and says, well, wouldn't you? All right, that's the end of this fourth lesson. See you at lesson number five.